And then can you, do I need it over here at all? No. I need to get nervous. I'm going to um, put it on Facebook. Jeannie, I have no idea where you put your sandwich. I know, I went looking for it too, and I can't find it either. That's okay. That's because we need it. <laughs> hello! Hello, hello, hello! Hey, Patrick! I saw you. Oh, it's right here. Oh, it's right here. Oh. Hey, Patrick! She was, wow, doing, she was checking that box, and I couldn't read it. I okay. Is my mic on? Everything is on. I wonder if I should put it over here. You're fine. You think it hears me from there? It hears you from there, it's fine. All right. All right. Welcome. Hi, Shelly. We are going to, we're going to be doing this today. This gorgeous pillow right here. I should show you the real thing. Hey, Lori, yeah. do you mind grabbing me the Tweet Heart pillow, the real deal? Where is it? Is it on top of the thread chest? It's on top of the what? Thread chest or maybe where we were sitting today. So, um, hi Miss Cindy, hi Rolo. I'm glad you can hear me perfectly. I have a mic set up and uh, I just wanted to make sure that it was picking everything up. And good afternoon, Miss Lila. So hopefully you're stitching with me. If not, let's just use this as a sit and sew. And um, you can be working on whatever you wanna be working on. It's just a nice time for us to all get together. So this bobbin was just kind of sitting up here. And yes, it looks like embroidery bobbin thread. I'm just gonna put this in. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Here is the real deal. And this one was made by, um, by Dana. Dana who works here at the store. And uh, she's so funny because I can give her a project and like the next day it's done. You have friends like that? I'd like to be like that someday. Right now, I consider to reconsider whether or not I should start something right then, or maybe I should do it later on, and then I just sit and consider to reconsider some more. <laughs> so I love these sew alongs because it gets me to do the project with you. And I, I just love that because I will do it for you and not for myself. I'm more committed that way. Um, hang on one more second. Okay, let's look at the spreadsheet, the handy dandy spreadsheet. <laughs> Easier said than done. And I need to get out my, um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me get this out too so I can say charge up, whoops. I usually do these from home, which can be great but I would be racing home or I do the sew alongs from here too. And here is our handy dandy spreadsheet. So what I have on the agenda is we are gonna start out with uh, the flowers and um, we're gonna be using the eight by 12. So we're going to, I know it says six by 10, but if you are adding the quilting stitches, it is bumping you out of that six by 10. So that's why we're gonna go to the eight by 12, or you can always go to the seven by 12, whichever one is gonna work for you. One of them's gonna almost fill up the eight by 12, and then we'll rehoop and we'll do the other little filler block. Um, and then we're gonna go on to the flowers, or I'm sorry, not the flowers, but the trees. You know what happens? I get home and I crash and burn. So I do display some energy here, Miss Shannon. <laughs> And then I get home, and like last night, I 
I literally fall asleep flossing my teeth. I like floss like two and then I fall asleep and then I'll like Patrick will be like get up finish flossing your teeth. So here is you might recognize this from the March Cuties and I didn't cut this off yet because if I leave it here then I can just go ahead and um, I can hoop tight and nice and close. So I was like oh, I'm just gonna leave it on there. Let me cut this away so it's not gonna be in the way of the hooping and then these two I'm gonna cut these away. Because if I can attach something, I'll attach something first. So first thing I'm going to do is hoop up. I'm going to move this up, and I'm just going to have a little bit of that news fabric, like a little bit of it peeking underneath. You've got about half an inch of no-so, or is it, it might be more than that. Maybe it's an inch of no-so on the top and the bottom. You have about half an inch on the sides. It's probably like an inch and a half or something like that. So just like that is kind of perfect. To me, that's perfect. I'm going to just pull in here so it's nice and taut but not tight. You don't want to distort the weave. Then what I like to do is I like to hand tighten, which it's already really snug. And if it's already really, really snug, you can go ahead and take your hoop tightener. And it's really snug. I can't even really turn it. We're good to go. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the machine. And then I'll cut this off next. Let me load it. I'm doing mine with aqua, which I'm really excited about because I'm excited to see what it looks like instead of the pink. But most people have chosen the pink, and I get it. It is cute. Let's go ahead and load up our design. Long day and you are just, this cold kind of like, uh, so I had on a Saturday, I went, oh my God, I feel better. I'm super humid. And then like on Sunday, I started to feel like it was like, I've just been tired, that's all. But I feel pretty good today. So, we are going to load in our quilting design that we're going to put in is going to be floral six by ten vertical and i put this in bright like red for the ones that aren't centered where we're going to have to pay attention to how we bring in our design on top of our quilting design so this one we need to pay attention to and this one everything else is kind of centered so um we're looking for floral six by ten vertical so i'm going to go ahead and touch this button here and go to the USB, and I loaded these this morning to make sure everything was on there. Didn't I? Cuties? No? Oh shoot, you know what it is? I think it's a different USB. Hang on, sorry about that. It was a this morning thing, but I, I think I must have, where's my pockets? Let me check, because I did it. Oh, here we go. It must be on this one. This is where I start to panic, because I'm like, oh no, it's not perfect for the ladies and the gents. Okay, there it is. So here's the quilting design, and it was floral, and it was six by 10, and it was vertical. So it's gonna be this one. There's only one option right there. I'm gonna go ahead and set it, now the other thing I like to do is I like to choose my hoop size. I need to give that, you do need to give the muslin a try. I think you would really like it. I think most people I've talked to have said, I can't go back to plasticky feeling no-show mesh, but I, I still use the no-show mesh. There is a time and a place for everything. So I'm choosing my eight by 12 hoop. Everything here looks good and I'm gonna combine. So I'm gonna add it, but I'm not gonna move it on this page. Yes, Patrick. Um, so he's got those pictures and then... I just need to create a listing. It's kind of okay. what I have to so do. so he's emailing them to us. Perfect. Um, all right, and then you said seven napkins? Seven napkins? I don't know what he's talking about. Is this the design that we're doing? It is, I'm assuming, Patrick always goes, I assume, and I go, don't ever assume. So we're doing this one first, flowers. So it is gonna be this one right here. Can I make this bigger? Oh yeah. Isn't that nice? On the Luminaire and Solaris, I don't know if you know this, 
But number one, there's an error here, so I can minimize this if I wanna see my designs. And when you look at your designs, you can pinch in to make them smaller so you can see more at once, or you can pinch, pull, push out to make them bigger. And so we're gonna do this one, and now you can see that the beginning of the title is showing too, the F-L-O for flowers. So let's go ahead and load that. And what it says here is it says alignment. Align the placement line of the embroidery file with the bottom and right edges of the quilting file. So here's a close up of what we're gonna be doing, okay? All right, let me look at this and make sure I understand. So here's my design. I'm gonna go ahead and touch edit and I will move both of these on the next page. But this one, Okay, so my question is, do I need to take that and put it in the very corner? Let me look at this again. I'm looking at this and it says align the placement line of the embroidery file. Is there a placement line of the embroidery file? Where is it? Here's my embroidery file right there. So the placement line of the embroidery file with the bottom and right edge of the quilting file. It looks like, you know what? It looks like that one's extending out a little bit. Do you see it right here? Like it has it out. Okay, so I think what they want is, will you ladies confirm with me before I lead everyone astray? But I think they have that, that black line all the way to the edge and that means I'm going to bring it all the way down to the bottom too. Okay, so that to me makes sense because when we go to sew it all together, we'll sew into the stem of that flower so it'll all be encased. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you think that is what we are doing. I think that's right, because you're seeing a little line all the way to the edge and that line all the way coming down. Oh yeah, and see the little stem is just below the red line. So we have it just below the red line. Looks good, that's what we're gonna do. I'm not gonna move it on here because it would move them individually unless I grouped it. I'm gonna move it on the next page. So we're gonna go ahead, now that we have everything aligned, we're gonna say okay. I'm gonna go ahead and touch embroidery and that's gonna be bring me to my secondary page which is the screen from which we stitch out. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and move it all the way up. If your hoop is on and the latch is down, it will not let you move the uh, design outside of your embroidery field. So I'm gonna go layout, move, and just scoot it all the way up. And that way we're conserving everything from here on down. I think it looks, Shelly, Thank you for that. Sometimes I need a little, yeah, that's what we should be doing. Um, Cause I question myself. All right, I am gonna go ahead and say, okay. First step is going to be, and when I'm gonna switch this from layout back to the uh, stitch out. First step is going to be um, placement line for your batting, tack down for your batting, placement line for your fabric and tack down your, for your fabric. You're gonna do this. We're gonna lay down our batting and we are going to lay down our fabric because we're just going to center it and then we're going to do the tack down. So we're going to do steps one and four and we'll skip the other step. How about thread? I had a heck of a time picking out my threads because I have so many different pinks and I want it to look absolutely perfect. Let's see, color doesn't make a difference. We're going to kind of be skipping these steps because we're doing the um, we don't need to do that placement line because we're gonna be laying it down with our batting. Uh, this is the first color that's gonna make a difference, which is gonna be a green, and I picked this really amazing green. I thought this one looked really fun. This is all actually polyfast. We used to be, well, we're still a wonderful thread dealer, but, um, we, that's what we used to carry for our embroidery thread. We loved it, but it just didn't have a big calling. People didn't come in and go, where's your polyfast? 
Whereas people come in all the time, they're like, oh, Isocord, I love Isocord. I'm so glad you carry it. Thank you, Lori. You're welcome. And here is, here is my flowers and water. I wrote on there that you need water soluble thread. I did bring that with me today. So you should have your batting and then your background fabric. And let's grab our spray tent if you have it. Hello, Miss Kim. I sent a note to Patrick to send you the, that receipt. I don't know if you've got any. Two yards. Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. Two yards. I feel so lucky. <laughs> I was supposed to tell you that sooner. Are you, can, can you spare that? You'll get it in March. Oh my God, Deanna just like made my day. She just made all my dreams come true. She went into her personal stash and brought me two yards of pink. So now I can fulfill stuff in pink if I need it. There's my spray tent. There it is. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray. This is actually a piece that I like piece together, which I don't really do anymore. Sometimes I'll abut stuff. Oh, how about we stitch while we're doing this? You don't have to see me spraying, right? Placement line, let's do it. And I'm gonna be spraying. Okay, you have a right and a wrong. Make sure you're looking at your dots and that the, when, the where they're, um, they show more. And the other side should have shape flex on it or some kind of fusible. Now, a lot of times, I will, uh, I'll use um, Marty's fusible tape for my batting, and I'll just use, that's how I put it together. I used to, because I didn't know that that product was out there. I've learned over the years from, um, from all of you guys, and it's been so wonderful, um, but I use that fuso, Marty's fusible tape, which I love. Okay, I'm going to lay this down. But I used to like, I used to use my edge joining foot and I would just zigzag my pieces together. The drawback of that is this might shadow through a little bit. But that's okay. Nobody's going to be looking. I am going to, we're skipping the tack down because we cut that to the exact size. So we don't need to do the tack down. And before I press this down, I'm going to out, feel it with my finger and just make sure I have about an inch all the way around. Doesn't have to be perfect. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and skip some stitches. Some stitches and some steps. To do that, we're going to go into this button. It shows you a minus and a plus. You're minusing and plusing stitches or full colors and steps. This is the tack down for the batting. We don't need that. That's the placement stitch for the background. We don't need that, but we do need this. And this is going to be the tack down. I have mine, um, oh, I should have uh, done white, sorry. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take this out. I am gonna take out the green. That's not what we want, we want white. I still have not done my glide order. I'm gonna do that today along with my other thread order for my specialty thread for the serger project. So if you need glide colors, you can still email me There we go. This is our tack down. Give your fabric a little caress. Love it. And then I'm gonna do the quilting. Sometimes I'll tickle it just to get it. So there's no puckering. Lynn, I was thinking about you because guess what? There is a new needle notebook pattern out. So um, they revised it and they made, because you're gonna see some of the needle uh, cases are bigger and like when I'm my, in my tutorial, I'm gonna hit start and it's gonna do the quilting. In my tutorial, um, I actually had, I can't remember if I had people do two clicks or three clicks to make it bigger for the bigger needle sets, like the organ needles, the anti-blue compared to the Schmetz. Um, but they've completely redesigned it, and so now 
the needle notebooks have a combination. So some of them are big and some of them are small, which I think is great. So we will definitely do that as a class. Okay, while it is doing that, you are going to have my green ready you're going to find a thread color that you're going to be using for your leaves and your stems and you need pinks and reds so for your flower if you haven't picked out your colors yet you need a red a hot pink a medium pink and a light pink so i pulled from all of my pinks i was like had everything on the floor maybe i'll do it here where there's more light
if there are products that I show you during this so long that you want to get, um, you can, uh, so if you want Banish Thread, you can put it in your, um, you can order it and just put Tweed Heart So Along price and I'll give you 15% off. So it'll be 15% off. And it's going to be the products that I use for this So Along. It does not take a lot. I usually take a wet paper towel and I just wipe down the back. You'll see, I'll, I'll do it if I if we don't have time in the sew along, then I will do it when I'm uh, finishing up the pillow. Oh, is Mr. Curtis here? Where is he? Hello, Curtis. And I just went, I don't think it's going to take a, a super long time. It wasn't a huge amount of stitching. working on today because I know some of you are doing sit and sew anyone working on something amazing that I need to know about Two degrees, baby. I was so excited. Patrick this morning, um, you know, he asked Google. That's his thing. Okay, Google, what's the weather in Reno today? And it was, uh, it said 52 degrees. And I was like, so happy. Because I've been so cold since November. Okay, I try to hoop sisters. And I was super jazzed about it. I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to teach this as a class. Okay, you're, we are going to skip the next step because we do not need to lay down our fabric and position it. Um, we already have it laid down. If you are not doing the background quilting, which is totally fine, then you would start right here. This is going to be the beginning of your embroidery. Since we don't need to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward. And we are going to start right here with the stem. Let me go ahead and reload that fun green that I'm using. I was starting to get panicky because we have been out of boxes of Filtech bobbins. And, um, and they, I ordered them middle of January and I'm almost out of bobbins at home. That's another thing that makes me panic. But they ship today and, and it's funny because I sent them say, something saying, hey, you know, I never got these. Do you know when they're going to ship? And then they instantly shipped them out, which made me go, I don't know if they just forgot me. 
Working on March cuties, that's fun. Oh yeah, Hoop Sisters. So I was really excited about and jazzed about it, but I didn't like the way the quilting looked on the back because it does a lot of cuts and stops and starts. I don't know how other people feel about Hoop Sisters because they're so pretty though. A basket liner. That sounds like a to-do list kind of thing. Oh my god, Marla, so you have it! Okay, perfect. So, I think I, I did give you one because I only have one here. I didn't look through the book. Yay! Then I don't have to look for it. You're going to have to whip up one of those banners. We're working on a scan and cut and uh, a combination scan and cut Janine Babbage project. Michelle and I'll do that together. some of my clothing because I, you know, I love shopping. And so, um, but I can't wear it all. So it makes me so happy that she'll go in my closet and find stuff that she loves. Because the other thing I don't like, I like shopping. I don't like getting rid of things. use that. Oh, we'll just do that. This is me reconsidering to consider whether or not that is the right choice. Is that going to make or break my pillow? Hopefully it won't. Okay, I'm going to put this in and it's going to do the other part. We're going to do three sections of the flower. This, uh, this um, block is uh, 37 minutes. Here we go. So, um, I used to really be a shop till you drop kind of girl. Like, I, like, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the mall. I wanted to go shopping. I wanted to go to all the stores. I have no interest in doing that anymore. Except the Sundance outlet in Salt Lake City. I 
love that place. And part of the reason I love it is because it is a, um, it's a, it's a treasure hunt. Like I've gotten so many amazing deals there. So I love that place. But I can't even, I used to love to go to like Nordstrom's Rack or um, places like that and I would spend all day. Number one, I don't have the time. And number two, I don't have it, I call it a dig. I don't have it in me anymore. I would love to go to like fabric stores and like dig and look through stuff and find stuff. And um, at this point, I don't, is that me getting older? What is that? Is that just me? It's like shopping till you drop. Is that like a, like a young person's thing to do? At this point, I do, I, I'm the same way, Shin. I want to get in there, get what I want, get what I uh, came for, and then I want to leave. I used to be so much fun to shop with, but now, and I, I it's a blitz creep too. Like I'm like in there, grab all the things I want. And the other thing is, I, I used to be like a bargain shopper. Like I didn't buy it unless it was on sale. I would go to, I'd look at like back to school shopping. I'd look at every single circular from Office Max, Staples, Office Depot, and then I would go to the different stores to get. Um, the best price on like different items and at this point I'm like at one one shop for me. Go in, get my stuff. If it's on sale, great. If it's not, oh well. For some reason it is saying my thread is almost empty. I guess I didn't put in a full bobbin, did I? You want to cut it first. So cut that thread. I wish it used the whole thing because look, that's like a decent amount left, but I don't want to deal with it because you know how sometimes you'll use your thread and it'll get caught. It doesn't spool off totally. I buy my bobbins by the box. I want to say the boxes are $46.99. They're totally worth it. It's 80 bobbins. They just shipped them to me, so I don't have them right now, but I should have them beginning next week it's the way to go if you feel like that is too many for you and you're not gonna use them all or it's gonna take you a couple of years split it with a friend I bought my first box of bobbins and I split it with sage okay I went back 10 stitches
right. Right, we're gonna do the hot pink. Then we're gonna do the light pink and then the red. And then water soluble bobbin. I don't know if I have enough, I'm gonna wind another one just in case. Working to finish March cuties. So I did, okay, I did my back and it looks so cute. But um, I finished all my stitching except I did not do, I haven't done the, uh, the I call them the itty bitties. I think they're the bitty blocks. So I haven't finished my bitty blocks. Isn't this nice? I'm stitching right now, but look. I can also wind a bobbin at the same time. So it's got two separate motors. So on the Luminaire and Solaris, and I think a lot of the other machines, like, like a Journey or an Ariel or any of those, you can wind a bobbin while you are stitching. So just save some time, right? So I love the little beards and all the little gnomes. Okay, again, this is my vanish. I'm going to put van on it and I'm going to write it on both sides. So I don't mistakenly try to Im Im uh, embroider or sew with that. Use a Sharpie. Spanish for me and I wrote it on the other side too. I always use Spanish light. I don't know. I've never used there's two different I guess weights of it. There's Spanish light and there's Spanish I think it's called extra but I always just use the Spanish light. I've never had an issue with it. It's a great thing to have if you are a um, if you want to learn how to do free motion quilting and if you just want to have a bunch of uh, practice sandwiches and you want to stitch on them and then just wipe the back and then be able to use that fabric again. Okay, let's go ahead and we're going to put in light pink. Light pink, light pink, light pink, light pink, light pink. That's your serenade for the day. I'm going to see Adele with my two of my friends from college. And I did not even realize that she has a new album. Am I so out of it? I need to uh I need to like I need to know all the songs so I can sing along. You always need to sing along at the concerts. Okay, so I'm doing light pink and then we're gonna do red. Are you are you working on this? And you're like you're uh, double fisted. You're doing on two two machines. 
a lot of times I'll be double fisted and I'll get my embroidery, my ten needle going, and I'll get my ten needle's been a little neglected lately. I've been tired, so I've been happy just to get on one machine these days. Hey, did Shannon broadcast these? Shannon brought on here. Right she's now. on here. Yeah. What, what's the order we're working on? Is she getting a multi needle hoop? Shannon, did you want a multi needle hoop? The five by seven Patrick just came in and was asking. Do you want him to call you? Do you sell the magnetic ones for the PR? Oh, okay. I totally missed that comment too. Um, are you looking when you say the magnetic ones? Do you want the baby lock brother ones that have? All the magnets that go all around the edges, or do you want a monster snap hoop? You, you know, I won't bother Shannon during the during the sew along. Why don't you just have her call us after the sew along? Although I may be before the end of the sew along. Yeah, I called and she said she paid for it. The multi needle. I don't know. Oh, did I already send it? <laughs> this is how I get my baby. <laughs> I think he already shipped it. Did you ship it already? It uh, it hasn't gone out because UPS hasn't shown up, but it's sitting over uh, in the in the pile of UPS packages. <laughs> Patrick, forget he done it. Don't you love this? Like, look how you you wouldn't know until you stitch it out how textured it looks. But just by them changing the direction of the stitching, um, you'll get a totally different look. Hi, Miss Ginger. So, Ginger, there is uh, we have the thread. We have a thread guide too. I want to say they're on the website and they're twenty dollars and ninety nine cents or twenty one dollars and ninety nine cents. So it's a glide thread chart and it has samples of the thread with the name, and the numbers, and the color of each one. However, this is um, this it hasn't been completely updated. So they will. I don't know when they're going to update, but there is going to be another thread chart. Um, cause they added probably like, I don't know, 30 or 40 colors. I could be wrong. It could be like 20 colors. Just felt like they added a lot of colors. Like first kiss. I think that's like a new color. Okay. Go ahead and stitch this out. I'll go grab one right now and I'll show it to you. I'll be right back. Who are you? color book. Oh, I'm like stuck in a wreck. Hang on. Looks like this. And I love these because they it's actual thread that's on here. So you can really get an idea for the color. So if I really wanted to get a glide color like this one, which is isoport, and there's some manufacturers out there where you can actually put in the number and it converts. I can put this next to the thread. It looks like this one up here, I think. Hot pink. 
that would be hot pink or maybe it looks like blossom but it's just kind of nice to be able to compare your colors and then you can kind of pick them out anyway so we have these in the store they're um like i said they're 20 i think they're 21.99 or they're 20.99 not knowing when the next one's going to come out i just got them What did you suggest for the bobbins? Yeah, I used it for the bobbins. Um, the Baby Lock and Brother multi-needles used to come with Coates and Clark paper-sided bobbins, like, the, and that was the standard, like what they would send with it. They've changed, and now they come with the Magna Glides, which is also going to be a glide product. Um, so that's what I use at this point. I use the Magna Glides. And I love them. I like the core. I like that every last bit of thread gets used on it. I haven't been looking at my red. That looks okay. I feel like I can see a little bit of the white fabric behind it, but I'm fine with that. And we sell those too. We sell those by the box. I, I want to say they're like 60 some odd dollars for a box. Okay, next color. After it's done with this, you're going to need a yellow. I'm just using this one. It is called Cornflower. just make sure it's L bobbins all right is this when we put in our let's refer to the directions we just did this step right here change the bobbin to a water soluble thread or a visible stitch color don't do it in white stitch the flower head satin outline one. Oh, and then we're gonna change it back so we're gonna put in our bobbin right now the vanish one if you don't have it Put in a color that you can see. Do not use white. It's really hard to kind of pick that out. I love bobbin boats. If you don't have a bobbin boat, you should get one. You should get multiples. It's great for like if you're just doing like a little project or you want to just grab a couple of bobbins to take with you for a retreat or something. And I love them because like it doesn't fall out. You can, they're just the best. And the colors are really pretty too. Okay, so I have my Vanish bobbin in there. Not that I could find. Huh, I just had somebody buy them. You could look up Magnaglide. See if it's under Magnaglide. All right. Okay, after it does this, I'm going to switch back to the white. It's about 65 here. Feels like spring. Ah, oh, that sounds amazing. I need a bouncy bin for this room. Hang on, we'll be right back. Okay, I keep thinking, like, I love bouncy bins. 
So this is a bouncy bin, this is OESD. But I have several of these in my sewing room because I like to have these right next to me to throw like my threads and things like that away. So we need one in this room. I just like to show you products that I love that make my life better. And a bouncy bin is one of them. Okay, after this, we are gonna change back to our regular thread and we're gonna stitch the flower head tack down. And then we're gonna go back to water soluble thread. So we're gonna switch back and forth. Okay, let's take this out. Patrick, do you need help? bin that's so that's when I use it when I have like little threads I actually put my bouncy bin on the floor right to my right and then I just like drop my threads into it or like my applique material whatever I'm I'm using okay I put regular thread back in that is for step number 13 right here and then over here we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the water soluble thread back in Anytime you see this symbol, that means you have a bobbin change, which I think is really smart. I like that they uh, put in more and more information. Oh, Joey's here to pick up the pretty and posh roller. Did you tell me you gave her? I gave her, not the, uh, I gave her the design. It's picking up the thread. The, no, oh, okay. the fabric. The fabric. The fabric. Oh, okay. I think there's one on my desk. All right, perfect. Okay, let's switch out again. Vanish. She'll get everything. <laughs> One by one to make your set beautiful. Ladies, if you thought you heard Taylor Swift, you did not. That was me. And I, too, am a songwriter. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm like a word mumbler. Okay, Vanish is in. Let's go ahead and hit start. Now we're going to do the innermost part, and then for step number, this is step 14, for step number 15, we're going to change the bobbin back to a neutral color, which I've just been putting white in. Because I don't need to see the color. I'm just going to wipe it down. Hey, Rolo! Oh, did you hear me? So Joe is here. Did you hear me? Oh, my goodness. My thing is not charging. I don't know why that was happening. Hopefully I'm charging now. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to get it for you tomorrow. Because then I can do the whole thing. The kit's going to be perfect. There's not going to be anything missing. Oh, jeez. I'm like nervous, am I charging or am I not charging? If for some reason this so long ends, I have my phone charged, like plugged in, but for some reason it was saying that it was low battery and it wasn't charging. Okay, that was step number 15. Um, we are gonna go ahead and if you look at your screen, shoot. I'm nervous because it wants to do the very, very center. Change, oh yeah, we're right. Change back to your regular thread in a neutral color. Did I, oh yeah. Okay, I am on the right step for some reason. So this was step 14 that we just did. Now we're doing step number 15. We're gonna put our regular thread back in. And I, I 
I jump the gun. I took my thread out. We are going to do the very, very center. There we go. And then after this, you're going to stitch the curved stem and leaf detail. So pick out a green, any green. I think I am going to go with aloe. Here we go. And we have our regular bobbin thread in there, so you don't have to worry about changing anything out. That's a good idea. Tomorrow, I'll have it tomorrow. Tomorrow. I sing for Patrick all the time, and he loves it. Right, Patrick? When, uh, when Violet was really little, we used to always say, oh my goodness, you have the voice of an angel. And she would, <laughs> it would make her sing even like harder. Is that the word I'm looking for? She would even be more into it. She's got a really pretty little voice. Okay, this right here is step number 16. Stitch the curved stems and leaves, leaves detail. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stitch out black to say, let me call you. And that, um, that's pretty fine. Like the, I, I'm definitely gonna put in a black bobbin. So if you have a black pre-round bobbin for the next step, let's put that in. And you wanna get your black thread. mason jar. I found it. It's listed as Magna Glide. Yes, Magna Glide bulk. Oh yeah. You know what? I will change that because it should say pre-wound on there somewhere. Thank you for uh, bringing that to my attention. Okay, before I thread up, I'm just going to go ahead and change my bobbin out to black. I don't always change my bobbin, but when I have black and I just assume, you know what? I'm gonna get pin dotting and I just can't stand that. So let's just put a black bobbin in right now. Just happen to have it in my little bobbin bow. I'll throw this in my little bouncy bin. And let's go ahead and thread up with black thread. When you slide this, Hold this, support it. If you accidentally push this too, then it can knock it could knock your uh, design off calibration. If ever you knock your design off calibration, it is not a big deal. Um, just go ahead and restart your machine, and then the when the embroidery arm initializes, it will recalibrate. Because I think we've kind of all been in that situation where we accidentally hit this, or it gets held in in one spot, or the um, the foot goes underneath our fabric and then it stitches where it's not supposed to stitch and next thing you know you are an inch too far up or half an inch to the right of where you should be and the first time that ever happens to you you just you're you're confused because you don't know what's going on but now you should know that you've just knocked your machine off calibration and just start it turn it off and restart it again and that will fix your problem When you say you're missing the comments, can you not hear or are you not seeing the chat? Because the best thing to do, I think, is to be on um, be on YouTube. I think that's where you're going to see everything. But, you know, I'm not an expert. I'm not 
Shannon can be our resident IT gal. Shannon will walk you through your IT experience if you're having an issue. <gasps> Look how cute that is. Oh my goodness. It's so adorable. So I was uh, looking at some of the things. So Michelle Gilmartin here teaches a software um, series called Software 101. It goes along with Palette 11 and PE Design 11. And so the ladies will post different projects or sometimes they'll send me pictures of things that they're doing. And I was looking at it going, oh my goodness, they're learning so much. And it was so exciting to see their homework. But I look at stuff like this and I go, ooh, is that like, could I draw that in and then digitize it and like create my own designs? Because I love that. I just love it. I have PE Design 11 and uh, someday when I have time, I'm going to take Michelle's class and become a software expert. I want to be a software expert, a scanica expert, and a long arm expert. I'm gonna go on there and change it right now so it says pre-wound for those magnet lines. look it and then my thread glide chart says oh no wonder nobody's bought any of those okay I just changed that too because it said we had none in stock and we have lots in stock all right now we want to go ahead and stitch out a tweet and I'm gonna use the medium of the pinks I'm gonna use the medium pink and then it's gonna stitch out white that's gonna go right down the middle this is cute this was one of the ones that I saw and I was like, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to stitch that out. Oh, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna switch out to my, uh, I'm not gonna use black. This is a light color. I'm gonna switch back out to my white bobbin. Black bobbin, you did your job for me. It looks amazing. Sometimes I will gamble and lose. Sometimes I go, ah, oh, do I really have to switch out my bobbin? I'll be feeling really, really lazy and it'll be fine. Sometimes like with the um, gnome feet and the, and the belt, I think it was totally fine to leave my white bobbin in, but I don't know. Things like thin lettering, I feel like that's where you really have to just assume you might get some pin dotty. I'm gonna go back. This will take me back to the very beginning. It was just two stitches, but I'm going to do it anyways. Was there a class on the zippy bags? There was a sew along on the zippy bags. Wait, let me go ahead and look at some of your questions. Mine, that's why I'm wondering. Do you run your machine at full speed? Absolutely. I run my machine at full speed. Um, and then I turn it down if I'm doing something really challenging or uh, maybe it's really thick and I'm worried about running it at full speed, but um, I'd say 95% of the time I'm running at full speed. Ginger, what? When I have it on, how do I change? Found it. Okay. There was a zippy bag sew-along which happened on the first of the month. 
and um, Rolo, send me a note and I'll send you the recording as well as my instructor notes. You know what? My writing's not as pretty either, but Violet has the prettiest handwriting and she's uh, she knows it. But she writes, she has, you know, she loves bullet journaling. So, and she'll always say, look at my notes. Like she loves to show me her, her notes from her classes and her notes are so beautiful. And I actually found like a quick book from when Patrick and I first got married and a lot of handwritten recipes in there. And my handwriting used to be really beautiful before I was really busy. And I showed it to Violet and I was like, look, now you know where you've got that gorgeous handwriting. Just look at mommy's handwriting. You should do the get to know your scan and cut class again. And then I think you need to find some motivation. So we're going to do a scan and cut class that's going to be um, part scan and cut to cut our applique pieces and then it's going to be embroidery and I think we're going to be doing the Janine Babbage happy birthday table runner. So that'll make you get on your scan and cut. stitch this step and we are almost done so go ahead and put your white color in well after it does this little T keep that pink out because that'll be a good color to stitch out your thread guide and then we're gonna get ready to do the next thing we're gonna do our filler block all right time for white my favorite white, although I did order myself a big king cone of, uh, I ordered myself a big king cone of the Glide white. And I keep this little bag. For me, it's just easier to put it in here. It has a little, like, I'm going to call it a butt. So I just stuff this in the butt, and then there's my vanish thread. So I don't get it confused. Like, that's my biggest fear is you know, doing a whole project in Vanish thread. That's not supposed to be done in Vanish. So my favorite white is Isocord White, color 0015. Now it's gonna stitch right down the center. This is something, like this is thick. If I was gonna like turn down my machine, I might turn it down here. But look, it's stitching beautifully without it, me turning it down, so why turn it down? Pedal to the metal, ladies. I am not going to press out and trim these right now. I'll do them all at once when I have everything put together. right here so you're going to want to grab that piece of fabric it's going to have the um the white with the big polka dots on it this is going to be our embroidery design we're going to do animal four your batting should be six by six so go ahead and get that together it should be in your spreadsheet as well oh my goodness so cute puckering don't worry about puckering see how i have some puckering right here and right here 
with your wool mat and your best press and a good hot iron, you're gonna get all of that out. So I, that stuff never bothers me. The other thing that helps with puckering is that shape flex that you're putting the fusible woven on the back. That makes it so you won't get as much puckering as well. So use all those tools. Hi, Miss Colleen. What time is it in Australia? Across the sea. Well, I guess the ocean. Across the ocean. Okay. Um, oh, put in a color that you can see. Don't I was ready to slide this off. That was me, like, thinking it's done, but not having it done. Here we go. The last stitch out. I already turned my page. This is going to be uh, your trim lines, I think. Let me turn back. This is using a visible color stitch the trimming guides and tick mark. There's your tick mark. You're going to be lining up with that. That little guy's important. And then it says, uh, do not stitch the next step. These lines are for design placement only. I always go, okay, if they don't want you to stitch that, like, why put it in there, right? Like, why put it in there? Why have all of that? But it's there. And then we're going to remove the block from the hoop. We're going to re-hoop. We're going to use this same hoop to do your filler block. Or if you have an 8x8, you could use that, but... We're going to push it all, uh, snug it all the way up to the top so it's not going to make a difference. Remember how neat my table was? Like, this is what happens as soon as I start stitching. These are my napkins from my meatball sub that I was eating while you didn't even know it. Oh, we are going to hoop. This is going to be my border right here. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm so excited. Spray tent. Sample. Ten fifteen. <laughs> ten fifteen. Wait, ten fifteen a.m. or p.m. A.m. Is this just adorable? I'll trim these later, but this one's bothering me. I'm gonna grab him and get rid of him now. Probably not the best scissors. These. Uh, who who knows where these even came from? Okay, I'm going to pop them up, and I'm going to move this up, and then I'll cut it apart later. As long as there's one design on in between, I can cut this top one off, and I always turn it to the back if you want to get rid of it, and I cut in between where the stitches are. So I'm going to move this up. I'm doing the same thing, too. It's like there's a white. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Pull that down a little bit because I like to see a little bit of the block above and that tells me I have it like I'm utilizing all of my uh, 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 uh. okay that's not gonna work I'm gonna loosen it up <laughs> do not practice the hammering technique Ooh, that's not working either There we go. Okay, I'm gonna hand tighten, which it won't hand tighten. I'm gonna tighten with this, as long as it'll turn easily. Yeah, that much. You shouldn't be cranking it. If you have to like crank it, that's too tight. All right, let's put this on the machine. Make sure that everything is flush. What you don't want is you don't want, oh, and I didn't even pull this inward. You don't want like your inner hoop to be set too high, like it's the worst when you're doing an embroidery and then the inner hoop pops out and your embroidery pops apart and then you have to try and get it lined up again. All right, I'm gonna put this on the machine. Here we go, we're gonna do filler block. Filler block. Here we go. Love filler box. Okay, comb. That's going to clear your screen. Let's go embroidery. Back to our pocket. I am in the top USB port. Let me call you Tweetheart. And already, I can't remember which design it was. 
So that's why I'm happy that I have a handy dandy, easy to find, but don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Um, animal six. And our quilting thread is white. So I put your quilting threads in there. Like that's a new category. It's all the stuff I want or that I don't want to have to go searching for. Did we say animal six? I think I said animal six, right? Yes, yeah, six by six. Um, if I had been more organized, I would have just pulled out my PDS. So there's animal six. Why this is called animal six? I guess the birds. And um, we're not we're not combining that with anything. So I'm just gonna say embroidery. My hoop is not on my machine. I'm gonna slide it on and pull down the latch. And now I can go to layout, move, and I'm gonna scoot this all the way up. That way we don't waste all of that muslin or all of that stabilizer that you're using. And what I'm doing right here, you can do the same thing with your roll of no-show mesh, of your uh, light mesh cutaway or whatever. I like, and I should make a little guide for you, if I'm using my 8-inch hoops, I like 12-inch stabilizer. If I'm using, um, so for my 5 by 7 and my 8-inch, 12 inches is like the perfect size. If you use 15-inch, you're going to waste a lot on the sides. Um, if I'm using my 9.5 by 14-inch hoop, then I like 15-inch stabilizer. And you can also use that with your 10.5 by 10.5 that's really, really tight. And then um, if I'm using my 6 by 10, I also like 15 inch, but I run my hoop. Do I run my hoop that way? I think I run my hoop like this way and the roll this way. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead. I have my pink in there right now. I'll just leave it in there because we're just doing a placement stitch. Go ahead and grab your piece of batting. Now fillers, filler blocks are a little bit different. Here is my filler block and my batting. I'm gonna go ahead and spray both of these. Off camera. working on your uh, your stuff right now. I'm going to go ahead and there we go. If you have any dark threads, make sure you pick them up. We're using white on top. It will shadow through. I normally, so the next step is going to be um, tack down for your batting. We're not going to do that because we cut our batting to size. So we're going to skip that. We are gonna do the placement because this is placement for a filler piece which isn't gonna get trimmed, so you want it to fit perfectly in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that step. I'm just gonna leave it in the pink so I can see it, and then we'll switch out to our white. Whoops. I'm gonna give my filler block a shot of spray too and I'm going to spray it I won't say heavily but I do spray it a little bit more because I want it to stay down on the edges okay and we're going to fit this right inside the placement line that was just sewn And now we're gonna skip the next step. The next step is the tack down, which I normally do for the bigger pieces. But if we do the tack down, it's gonna go right outside of that and it'll barely catch. And now we're gonna skip that and we will go to the quilting. That's the next. So filler blocks are a little bit different. Filler blocks, for most blocks you do one and four. For filler blocks you do one and three. And then the quilting, of course. All right. Let's put in our white thread or whatever you want to quilt with. I do the white just because I feel like there's a lot going on on the top and you want, you don't want it to be too busy in the background. But maybe you do. Maybe busy is better. 
Maybe you do your own thing. It looks amazing. So whatever makes your heart happy, you can give it a try. I'm going to be really mindful about when it gets to the edges. And if your filler block doesn't reach all the way to the edge, that's okay because you have your muslin in the back. We will press and trim to the muslin. So I might tickle my fabric as we go just to make sure. I'm going to be, I'm going to pay attention to it. This is not a step away block. Don't step away from this because you just don't want that foot to kind of scoop underneath one of the edges and then start sewing things down and ripping your embroidery apart. If you don't have a nine and a half by 14 inch hoop, then you are going to be doing these. Um, the designs are four by 10, and I think the best way to do them is in your eight by 12. And uh, since they're skinny, what you would do is you would load your design and swish it all the way over here. And then when you re hoop, you're going to take your design and swish it so it's like next to this. So you're really filling your hoop from left to right. But since I have a nine and a half by 14, I'm going to be running two designs at a time. We're going to put two in the hoop at a time. I'm going to just kind of pull back my fabric here so everything's nice and taut. What you have to do is watch out for that black screw right there. That is my arch nemesis. He has gotten me before. He is very painful. If you've ever been like attacked by that screw. is done. I'm going to go ahead and scoot this out. Oh, I could have gone, oh, you know what? I could have gone down even further because I don't have that like edge that hangs over, but that's totally fine. Here we go. We're done with two blocks already. And whatever I don't finish today, I probably won't work on it until this weekend, but this weekend I'll finish up my May cuties. I'm sorry, not my May, my March cuties. And I'll finish this up. So this is definitely need to order. Ordered. I don't know which one that is. Which that's, one is it? that's just the Scroll? green for the backing. Okay. And then um, the sea foam. I didn't ordered a number. Here's Seafoam. your inventory of what you'll need from the other okay. stores. Okay. okay, and then I'll be yeah. back Thursday. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll put all the fabrics all cut then. Okay. I've known those. Ones. If you, if anything happens, oh, you yes. know. I will. I will. Okay. All right. We are cutting, um, <laughs> I know we're always cutting kits. We carry kits for like so many different projects, and so um, we've just been selling a ton of uh, the luckiest, like the square pillows. And then um, Main Street Celebration. So we're just getting those ready because that those are coming into season. All right, here is my nine and a half by 14. If you do not have this hoop, it's a great one to have. I don't use it a lot, but when I want it, I'm so happy to have it. Is this, uh, where is this? Oh, look it. So here are my, my um, what do you call these guys? My little gnomies. And I cut the top ones off, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna hoof up here so I can like use this part so I don't waste it all. 
and it's a little awkward, but I hadn't cut it off yet, so I was like, oh, that's perfect. I'm going to leave it on there. I'm going to flip him up. We'll go all the way to the top. Here we go. Perfect. Do you want to ask which one, Lori? Which one? The cherry is red. Oh, we had some. The little one, the little one, this one. Oh no, there's that. There's none of that anymore. Okay. It was like, uh, and they won't reprint it. And they won't reprint it, so we're gonna have to figure out something. Yep. We'll do it later. Perfect. Let's go ahead and put this in. I'm not gonna even. I know it's gonna be snug. So I'm going to go ahead and load this up. And then I'll cut these guys off. And if you can't stand all that fabric dangling, then just cut it. Just cut it to size. Do it however you want it. I mean, if this bothers you, having some of this hanging over, I totally get it. If you don't like that, I want you to be happy. Life is too short to do things you don't want to do. Right? We have to adult with everything. So when you get to do your pleasure stuff like sewing, then make it enjoyable for yourself. Don't let me be bossy because I can be really bossy. Say, Jeannie, I'm not going to let you boss me around. All right, where's my special book with the white cover? Okay. Next, we are going to... I have done four of the, depending on the design, boy, have I saved. I know, can you imagine, like, wh what you would waste? It's just, I hate waste. Okay, we are going to go ahead, tree one, tree two, I'm going to load them both. They're both animal four by ten. Although, you know what we can't do is we can't move them. So I might do, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to load one at a time. I'm going to do load one, stitch it. And then I'll load the second one while the picture is up so I'll know the spacing. And then um, I'll put that up and then I'll throw this away because if I combine, it'll want to move everything that's in the hoop. So if that made um, no sense to you, don't worry. You're going to see it in action. Sometimes I just like to, um, <laughs> I like to think what I'm thinking and speak it out loud, but really it's just the thoughts in my head. <laughs> Thank you so much. Good to see you. I barely saw you today. I know. Animal four, tree one. That's what we're doing. Let me call you Tweet Heart Quilting, animal four. It's the four by 10. There he is right there. And I'm gonna take, oh, let's choose our hoop size so we know how far over we can move it. So I'm gonna go up here to my settings and I'm gonna choose the nine and a half by 14. I think I like, I think I played with this beforehand. So um, let's just take the, we're gonna leave it there for right now because we're gonna combine the other design and then we're gonna move it. Are we centered? Are we centered? It says, yeah, we're centered. So you don't have to worry about that. And we're gonna add. Tweet hard P-E-S. Tree one. I think that's tree one. I think they loaded them in order. I guess I should look at it and just make sure. Here's my book. Yes, that would be tree one. We're gonna leave it just like that. We're gonna hit embroidery. When we go to the next page, everything will be grouped for us. My hoop is on with the latch pull down, so now it's combined. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move them all the way to the top left corner. It will not move it out. So now what we're doing, instead of wasting that and or wasting top and bottom, we're gonna snug it all the way up there. And then we'll do the next design. So I'm gonna stitch this out first, then we'll load the next design. If I load them both, then we would have had to really work on like centering everything. So we'll just do it this way. Okay. First step, placement step for your batting. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit start. Let me grab my batting. We'll give it a little shot of spray. I have my tree. Where are all my trees? 
Wait a minute. Oh, here it is. I have all of my labeled tree one. All the embellishments are in there. Tree two, tree three, and tree four. We'll just do them one at a time. I'm gonna give my batting a little shot of spray first. Every once in a while, I think we're pretty good because we're all pretty self, uh, not self-conscious, conscientious. Um, but every once in a while, we might get something not right in your kit. Please reach out because I will send you whatever isn't there or, you know, I just, uh, I hate the idea that you might have, got, have gotten something. Like I had one of, I had like three reds and I was missing a pink in mine. So I know it happens. Okay, there's that. And I'm also going to spray my background fabric too. It's going to be the um, white doodle. I was thinking for the next cuties, and I'm just going to center this. I'm centering it to my batting. I'm going to feel around here. Make sure I have about an inch all the way around that I do, and then I'll just go ahead and press it down. I, when I do this one, I might have to fold this back and like tape it. Okay, next step is going to be, if you look at your screen, this wants you to do tack down for your um, batting. We don't need to do that because we cut it to size. Placement for your background, tack down for your background. We're gonna start with that. So go ahead and hit start. You want white, and you're going to do the quilting in white. Whoop. Oh, it's, it was hitting my um, my uh, spray bottle. Roll it closer to the hoop and rest down the edge. Are you talking about your, um, I know I should roll this, right? Like this right here, I should roll this, and then I should clip it. Why do I, why don't I do that? I don't know. Because that one makes too much sense. The other day I pulled my design, I was like sitting on the, was sitting on the, and it was like pulling the, yeah, anyways. Yes, that would make sense to roll it. Okay, let it go ahead and do the quilting. And you need to get your glitter. So we're looking for one of your part one glitter. Where's part one? Part one is red. Grab one of your red glitters. There's no more in the box. Is that what they were yeah. 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 It just needs backing. And then you got to make sure it has both of the... What's the word I'm looking for? That has the little bouquets, the little pool flowers. I'm not even going to use mine. I brought my handy dandy bin of all my leftovers from all my Kimberbell projects, and I have just so much in there. So I have some red glitter. I'm going to go ahead and use that. And the other thing it wants... We're going to do our branches first. So you're going to do your brown thread. I'm using brunette. That seems to be the brown thread I really, really like. Here's the brunette. We rolled it, what, what were we doing? I can't remember. I think it was um, one sweet spring. We definitely rolled it and we clipped it. I, th I used Wonder Clips to clip it up. And they make like a, the bigger green ones that I really, really like. Although I'm not going to stitch two at a time, I'm just going to have my hoop loaded so I can do two at a time. This actual design is 23 minutes of stitching. However, we have a lot of applique, so we're going to be putting down um, lots of different embellishment pieces and cute little things that came in your kit.
we got home the other night and I was like, oh my god, Patrick, we don't have time for, like, why did we get another dog? We make time for them. But, um, he was like, he goes, so, so they can say hi to us when we get home. Because there's nothing better than, than your animal saying hi to you when you get home, right? You just feel so loved. All right, I'm gonna put in my, I'm using the brunette, which I love. We've been really bad. We, uh, I mean, we crate trained Poppy. She's four months. We've been letting her sleep with us on the bed, which we didn't let Momo do that until he was like six months. But she's so cuddly. She just comes over and like, just spoons with you and she's she just sleeps she's pretty much sleeping through the night although patrick did have to let her out last night because she had to go to the bathroom and then you want to get your brown fabric we're going to put that down next I'm probably going to just, I mean, it's a little, do you see the picture? Like, look how much brown you need. Like, that's it. Just like that little strip right there, down the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spray it kind of on the edge and see. Let's see. We'll see, we'll see the, when it does the placement line, if we need to truly go diagonal to diagonal, we might need to. Are you talking about the skinny little branch that goes right down the middle, or are you talking about these? Do you want to scan and cut all of these so that you're not stitching them? I'm pretty old school, and I just like to trim. I think if it was like a lot of, like maybe the hearts. Maybe I should have done the hearts on my scan and cut.
Australian Shepherds. Which, I have no idea how we ended up, well I do. I had a customer, I, I'd been wanting a dog, and we had a customer come in that had an Australian Shepherd, Red Tri, and she was so sweet, and she was so beautiful. I said, I want a dog like that. And it was, um, it was during the pandemic, it was 2020, and um, they told me the name of their breeder, and I went online, and they were just about to have a litter, and I reached out. She lived in Montana, and during the pregnancy, she moved to Florida, so I flew to Florida to pick up the puppy. And so we got a red try, and I was like, this is perfect. I need a dog that's gonna be great in the store, and great with people. Well, let me tell you, Momo is more of a guard dog than a store dog. <laughs> Although he was great today, he was super friendly and waggy, but there's some days where um, he will run at you enthusiastically. <laughs> but I just love him. I love him so much that we got another one, and we love her too. Yes, Shannon, I do think fabric branches would have been great. It's nice they combined them. So we're gonna put this branch down, and after the branch, we're gonna do um, we're gonna do a heart with the pink. So get your light pink, whatever light pink you were using. We're gonna use that again. So if you wanna get your thread colors out and ready and in a row. They're big. Well, Momo apparently is borderline obese, which if you saw him, he is not borderline obese. But I guess he gained three pounds in the last month because I feel bad feeding Poppy and not feeding him. So you know how puppies eat three meals a day? So I started feeding him lunch, which we don't normally do. And so he did get a little chunky, but to me, he looks beautiful. But um, the vet said that she would like to see him lose a little weight. He looks gorgeous. He's just big bones, ladies and gents. Rolo just got a new kitten. She got a, uh, and you know what's funny, Rolo? I thought, I thought it was a man coon, like M-A-N-C-O-O-N. I didn't realize they're called man coons. But I, I think I looked it up or something. Um, but we're gonna have to check him out. Check him out sometime. Oh, Cork would look fantastic. Trish, you're totally right. Cork would look absolutely amazing. Well, did you see Marlene Vixenman? Anyone see her picture that she posted with her tree? And she had added the little initials, the love initials. That was cute. Yeah, I didn't realize it was, it was main theme. Okay, placement stitch, go ahead and just start again. You can do that same color brown. And then I'm gonna kinda lay this side next to it. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go diagonal. Yeah, you have to go corner to corner. It's not gonna work this way. All right, I'm gonna give it a shot of spray. If you want to, um, if you want to tape, you can tape too. Which way did I spray? I can't tell. There we go.
Okay, do your tack down, and then we're gonna trim, and the directions say, trim the fa fabric close to the stitch line. I'm gonna get my snips out. One layer. I have two pairs of snips. I have just my regular silver ones, and then I also have my femoral titaniums, which make me feel gorgeous when I use them, because they're so beautiful. Whichever. I have at least two or three pairs at a time because I tend to misplace those. So these are something that we would not, so they need to, I wonder if I could open these up wider. As long as they can open up 60 degrees or more, Patrick can um, sharpen them for you. But if they barely open, then we can't. We need to open a little bit wider than this. There's some innies and outies with this. So I'm uh, a meeting two of my college girlfriends in uh, Vegas um, the weekend of the 25th because we're going to go see Adele. And we've been talking a big game. Did I just do that right? Yes, outline stitch. Go ahead and hit start. And I, I think when it comes down to it, I'm going to be like, can we go to bed? It's going to be like 9.30. Be like, we're really, really tired. Can we just go to bed? I don't even know how to go out and like, I don't know how to party. Okay, so we are doing step number eight, which is stitch the branch decorative outline. This is one of those colors too. I think we're okay. I almost feel like I do see a little bit of pin dotting, but I'm just gonna go with it. It's not much. names on here. Just to celebrate our love, especially Patrick's love for me. So I never, like, is our main currents, like, is that new? I never heard of those until maybe like the past couple of years. I'd never seen one. I'd never heard of one. Okay, we are in step number nine. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is stitch the heart for placement line. You're gonna need your mylar, so get your pink. I'm using my lightest pink. <laughs> That's how I feel, parting for me is the same. We had friends over for dinner and it was like 9.30 and all I kept thinking was, they need to go because I'm really tired. Maybe I'll feel differently. Like how do how do rock stars do it? You want to get your mylar, and you're gonna place the heart heart four mylar right side up. You're gonna stitch heart four tack down line and fill, and you're gonna tear away the excess. So, I mean, look how much you have. I'm just gonna put it right here. Mylar's forgiving too. So if you, if it folds over or something, that's totally fine.
Okay, there's that first one. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit start. I can kind of peel this away while that is stitching. I like to, when I'm pulling away my mylar, I just pull in towards the embroidery. This mylar, um, I think that you have, there is a, what is that? There's an embroidery pattern maker and they do all sorts of mylar designs. So I think that's what this is right here. Look at, and then you get a little bit of shimmer back there. I'm gonna give this a little shot of spray. I'm just gonna put this down because what am I gonna do with a little bit of that? Tack it down and then it says trim the fabric as desired. There is, I don't agree with that because um, there is the decorative heart seven stitch the heart seven decorative outline because you're gonna have threads showing through. So anytime you're doing that decorative stitch, I say go close to the stitch line. So trim it close. Don't do it as desired. As desired is if you're, like that to me is like if you're trimming leather or if you're trimming felt or something like that, you want a little bit of edge. But if you're doing that decorative stitch, it doesn't look good if you have, uh, if you have uh, threads peeking out. How about I pull this back a little bit? So close, close to the stitch. All right, do your decorative stitch around it. And then we're gonna stitch the heart. One placement line you're gonna put in your red thread. Get your red back. It's called, I wanna say the company is called Pearly Gates, and they have all sorts of really fun mylar embroideries. I know. That might be what we have to do is take a nap beforehand, and then we can go out. <laughs> We're going to need a plan of action. I'm super excited. These are like the girlfriends I lived with. Um, actually, we went to college together, but we lived together out of college. And we haven't done, the three of us haven't done a trip together. It's been a long time. So I'm super, super excited. I have this piece of leftover my uh, glitter from before, so I'm going to use this. If you're using the glitter from your clip, kit i want you to peel off the protective coating so there is a protective coating on here the easiest way to do it is bend back on that protective coating and then it'll separate and you want to peel that off i'm going to leave mine because i'm not using it all right i'm just gonna i am gonna give this a lot of spray a little shot of spray i find that sometimes it buckles but i'm just spraying that corner This says there's going to be a satin, satin outline. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it right there. Go ahead and stitch it down. This is going to have a satin trim outline. So I'm fine with it being really close. I'm going to trim it close. Trim the glitter as desired. Use a pressing cloth. So heat up your iron. Let's go ahead and heat up our iron because we are going to press this down. Holy, holy manoli. There is stuff everywhere. Let me get my mat over here to the side. Holy cannoli. I'm going to use my snips again to trim this. Of course, I don't know where I put them, so here's one of them. Trim it close. You know what? I'm not even going to press it now. Because are we going to have other ones? Heart fill. I'm going to I'm going to press it in the end because then I don't have to take it off. And it's so small. You know when you really have to worry about pressing them is um, when you have big 
big ones because those will buckle and you'll get bubbles. This one's so tiny. It's so itty bitty. I'll press it later. Okay. Um, next step. Stitch the heart six placement line. That's going to be red too. So we are right here. We just did this heart, laid it down, trimmed it. Now we're going to stitch the heart six placement. It says color doesn't make a difference, but I already have red in there and we're going to be using red next. So I'm just going to hit start. You want to get your, your fabric, your cherry fabric. I'm going to give this a little shot of spray. tell where I pressed it. And then we're going to trim this one as desired. Stitch the heart, six satin outline. Oh, you know what? This one, I don't know if this one is going to get a satin outline. I should have, if he's not getting a satin outline, I think I was looking ahead at the next one. I should have just trimmed it with a little bit of an edge. I like to have about an eighth of an inch, but it's okay. This one is definitely going to get the satin outline, so I'm going to trim it really close. Right, add your hoop on, satin stitch outline. That is step number 26. Next step, stitch the heart two and eight fill. There's a fill stitch. Okay, I don't know what the fill stitch is, but that's heart two and that's heart eight and it wants you to do fill stitch next you're just going to leave that red thread in haven't looked at notes in a while we've been chatting hi Annetta we are stitching out um let me call you tweetheart so it's this pillow right here so cute. You can make it, Annetta, for the love of your life. So I'm making mine for Patrick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Pearly Gates. We should do a Pearly Gates project. Like, maybe we skip. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and. Oh, okay. So it is. Did I skip something? I want to make sure I didn't skip anything. Because it says fill, right? Let's go back to... Okay, yeah. So it's adding a heart here. And then it's adding one up here. So those are just going to be um, just uh, embroidered. Just thread. And then we're going to put our light pink back in. And it's going to do some stitches on top of this. Should we do something like Pearly Gates? They have like adorable designs, don't you think? Maybe what we'll do is we're going to do a no Kimberbell month. And that month we're just going to do some of the other makers. light pink next I heated up my iron I can smell it hot pink so we're going to do 
doing light pink and then we're going to do hot pink. So get your light pink and your hot pink that you are using. Shoot. Where did I put mine? I'm going to take this time to tidy up a little bit. Right. I'm going to put my light pink in now. Sorry, I hit the camera. It's bouncing it. There's my gorgeous light pink. I have lipstick this color. <laughs> I think I still have it too because, again, I have trouble throwing things away. But I don't know why I would think that would look good on me. I, I actually don't wear lipstick. I For years, I would go... Um, makeup shopping like once a year like around Christmas time and I would buy like I, and I, I'd spend like 100 bucks or something I haven't done that in probably a handful of years but I used to buy lipstick and yeah, I don't know now I'm all, all natural poor Patrick We're going to stitch the hearts three and five fill. And again, that's going to be your hot pink. Netta, what what's going on with the machine? Maybe we can help you. Maybe we can help you troubleshoot it. You should um you should call me later and we'll talk about your machine and see if there's anything we can do to help you. Maybe it's something that isn't a big deal. Like and we can walk you through it. Alright, now we're doing the hot pink hearts. Your prickly pear 
And then this one here is your pistachio, which I think I really love the Kimberbell felt. I think they're worth it. I think the quality is great. I'm going to be using this with my prickly pear and then with my other color. to do stitch the leaf one and three placement line. I'm going to go ahead and change out my thread color. We want something that kind of goes with our prickly pear. I'm going to just go ahead and use this color, which is sage. In honor of my bestie sage, we're going to use this color. Whoops, sorry. Don't mean to make you seasick. I know I thought they, you know what? They are a good company. So I wonder, um, have they not been able to help you and troubleshoot with you? So you are going to do your placement line and then you're going to place your leaves one and three felt pieces centered over the placement line. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to give my leaves a shot of spray. I don't you like using tape with my felt. Because I feel like when you pull it away, it can like distort your felt. So for me, spray is the way to go, and you know I just love spray. Okay, so we're just gonna center these over your placement line. I haven't done these before, so I don't know what to expect. And then it says stitch the leaf one and three center tack down and outline basting line. Okay. Just go ahead and put your foot down and stitch. And then you're going to trim the felt as desired, which for me means it says remove the outer basting line. Do not remove this center tack down. Oh, that, that line's going to come come out. So, which, you know, will mean that they kind of, you can kind of flip up the edges. These are tiny. Next time I would just like lay my felt down sideways, like the other direction. So I'm going to trim these. I'm going to trim them with my, my uh, curved straight scissors. This is what I use when I'm trimming as desired. You have one curve that's going to go over the edge of your hoop and then you're going to have that straight edge which is going to make it so you can trim these any way you want. And then it's going to ask you to remove the basting stitch. And I think what I'll do is I'll remove that all at once. So let's go ahead and trim around these. And for me, it's going to be like an eighth of an inch around. Why does that feel so hard there? What I found was when I was using my other scissors, the curved curves, I couldn't get a nice, like, the edge to go the way I wanted it to go. So these came in my um, Fomori thread kit and I had them for years before I used them. And the first time I used them, I was like, oh my goodness, those are perfect for what I wanna do. And then I want you to take out the basting stitch. I don't know. That's up to you. Let's look at Dana's. I kind of like the basting stitch. So here they are without the basting stitch. 
I can tell you right now, I might be leaving my basting stitch in. They're kind of cute. All right, uh, next set. Now it's going to do a set of the um, this green. You know what? Part of me goes, should I just leave the thing, same thread in or should I change it? What do I have? Nope, don't want that color. Maybe I'll just do this one. This one is Clover. I don't know if that's really the right color either, but I'm just going to go with it. A little cute. A little contrast is good sometimes. So we are in step number... Remove the outer basting stitch. Do not remove the center. I'm, I'm undecided. I may leave that. kind of like the outline. I don't think anyone is really going to notice one way or the other, except for you. Okay, I'm going to give these a little shot of spray, too. You could lay them the other direction, but what are you going to do with these itty-bitty pieces of felt? And we're going to do the same process. Here we go. I'm just going to lay that down. Lay that one down. Lay this one down up here. Reach out to them too. See what they can do to help you. So that was clover. So I used sage on these and then clover on those. And then after we're done with this, um, we're going to trim those leaves as desired, remove the outer basting stitch, and use a visible thread color. You're going to stitch the trimming guides and tick marks. And I really like the outer stitch. I'm leaving mine. So, I mean, it is a basting stitch, so it's a little bit, uh, it's, you know, a basting stitch is going to be longer than the regular stitch. But I think it looks really cute, and I like the contrast, and so... Plus, it means I don't have to take out those stitches. So up to you, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and pull this back so I can get to this. Look at this leaf. He's so itty bitty. These are cute. All right, slide this back on, hit start. I have green in there. You want to see this thread color that's going to be your trim line for later on. And we are done with tree one. We're going to go ahead and load in tree two. And there's all sorts of instructions on trimming this down. I have a Creative Grids four and a half by 18 and a half inch ruler. I might just use that and lay it down here and then trim it down to size, just to be honest. But if you want, you can layer the three rectangular rulers. You're going to just trim right here. And then you'll take out the the, the inner two and then you'll trim left and right and then you'll connect the lines. So up to you. I probably will be doing the other way. We are going to do tree two. This one is done. Don't do the next step. The next step are those like lines that it doesn't want you to stitch right here and here. You're going to skip those and we are done with this block. 
Let's go ahead and load in um, tree two. And we're gonna leave this one on our screen so we can see where to place for right now. So I'm gonna go home. Let's go embroidery. And if we look at our spreadsheet, and if you are doing this in like your eight by 12, you're just gonna unhoop and you're gonna rehoop. Just move your fabric. If you're doing the eight by 12 and you're try trying to save fabric this way, you're gonna just hoop horizontally. I'm hooping vertically because I'm doing two at a time in the nine and a half by 14. And let's go right here. We're gonna go back to let me call you Tweetheart. Was it animal? Yeah, it was animal four by 10. PBS. Four by ten. Set. And um, I have my hoop size selected already. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that. I'm going to load the next design. So I'm going to touch down here, add. And we're looking for tree two. Tree two. So that's one. This is going to be two. What? No, sorry. This is one. This is going to be two. Is that two? Yes. Hey, so I'm going to go ahead and touch set. And let's look at our instructions. And it says tree two centered. Are you feeling good about uh, five o'clock, G? Do you think this is going to run long? I don't know. I, I have so, to go to the bank. So, okay. Okay. So let's go embroidery. That's gonna combine it. I'm gonna take this and scoot it up to the top left, top right. Oh shoot, you know what I was supposed to do? I was supposed to leave the other design so I could see. Um, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and lay out, move. I think that's good. You know what I can do is I can, um, there's lots of things I can do. I can say okay. This right here will give me like an outline of where my stitch is going to be. So I might just go here to my leftmost stitch. And you can see it will not interfere. I can just go ahead and fold that back. And I can go ahead and I can touch this button right here. That's going to give me uh, the bottom leftmost point of my embroidery. And you're going to see it's not going to inf interfere. But I am going to take this fabric back. So I'm good. I probably have like... I don't know, less than half an inch, but more than a quarter of an inch in between my two designs. Let me grab my tape and we're gonna tape that back. I meant to leave that design up and then load this so you could see, but I totally forgot. So I want this just to be out of the way. Transport to me is the best tape to use for embroidery. I like Kimberbell's paper tape for things that I don't want as much stick, but something like this, I just love it because it just rips super easily. It's super sticky. You can use it over and over again. And the price is right to Okay. There, that should stay. All right, we are good to go. How are we doing? I'm gonna look and see if there's any messages. I think we're good to go. We are going to, I'm gonna say okay right here. I'm gonna switch this to layout. First thing we're gonna do is the placement stitch for our batting. Um, I gotta slide my hoop on first. And let's do our placement stitch. And while it's doing the placement stitch, I'm going to spray my batting and my background fabric. Whoop. That clicking was my embroidery arm hitting everything that I had put to the left of it. Here's my tree two folder. Somebody was asking about these sleeves. I like the game note ones. There was another one that I bought and this, I mean, it looked exactly the same, but just feeling the plastic, that one, the plastic felt cheaper. So I love the game note. And then the other thing I use, um, I use these, the little zip baggies too, the reusable zip baggies to be 
honest, I can't remember what brand this was, but I got these on Amazon too, and I love them. I like them because they're clear. So I know what's in there. And I bought two different sizes. I think it was, um, I don't know, they just make organizing so much easier. Virginia showed them to me. But they had like, it was hard picking them out because I was like, which ones do I get? Are they all the same? Are they different? Ooh, look at your fabric. I almost sprayed the right side of my fabric. So look at your fabric before you spray it and put it down. Okay, center this to your batting. Just feel around it. That's good. I'm good with that. You're going to do your tack down. I'm going to go ahead and change it out to white. You could leave it the green. This tack down stitch doesn't make a difference, but I'm going to just change mine out to white now. And I think what we're going to do is we are just going to finish this one. That means we have... Should we get together one more time to finish this? I'm trying to think if I could do Monday. Or should I just just film it? What do you what do you folks think? Do you want to do one more sew along to stitch this together? That means we would stitch out. Um, should you have homework? Should I make you finish the next two and then we'll do the sashing together? We could do that. And should we get together on Monday? We have to look at the calendar. What do you think? I don't even know, was anyone even stitching with me today? I got my machine back, now I have a projector. Yay, they fixed it! Okay, good. So there was something just where they just had to recalibrate your projector. Yeah, you definitely... Um, Shannon, if you remind me, send me a note and I'll look at my past orders. I just bought those on Amazon. And I'll send you the link to with the ones I got. Okay, let it do this. Oh, you know what? I'm so sorry. I totally messed up. That was uh that was wrong. So what I did was I did the tack down, which now I have to worry about encasing it in the seam. Um I should have skipped. I should have done, let's go back to the beginning, which is uh, stitch zero. That was the placement stitch for the batting, which I put down. I should have skipped this step, which I just did. And then we need to skip the next step because I already laid down my batting. And then we should have done this step. This step is going to be the tack down. Um, I'm going to do the tack down because the tack down is where you're going to kind of uh, put your ruler around that. It's going to give you an outline and that's where you're really going to want to stitch. I don't totally know how that's going to play out because when I stitch together this, I'm going to want to encase this. And I don't know if I want to rip that out because um, it's a double row of stitching, which is kind of a, a pain in the butt. So we'll see. I'm hoping I can just encase it in my seam. That's what happens when you talk and you don't pay attention. You were paying more attention than I was. And that's why sew alongs are free. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now we're gonna do the quilting stitch. Please homework sew along. Love sewing with me. All right, let's do it. I'm gonna look at my calendar right now. Homework. Your homework is going to be to do tree three and four. And then we are gonna come back together and we are gonna do the inner borders, the outer borders, and then we'll just uh, press everything out. We'll sew it all together if we have time. So let's look at the calendar. 
CJ, whatever you want, you just tell me. All right, today is the 8th. Can you believe it's the 8th? How did that happen? <gasps> oh my goodness. Valentine's Day is next week. Gotta do something for Patrick. Okay, should we stitch together next Monday? Mondays are always good days for me. Um, just because we do not work. Our store is open. So let's do Monday at 10 a.m. So that's going to be 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's going to be my time. I'll send a note to Christine so she can put this up. And um, I don't have a tweet her group. So just know if you're on here, we are going to get together. Uh, that is Tuesday. Some of you might have software with Michelle. Software with Michelle. Uh, what are we going to do? Let me see who's in there. And, uh, okay. I don't know if any of those ladies are stitching this with me anyways. So we are going to do, it's going to be a live feed. And we are going to do the 13th. And I'm going to put it in for 10 o'clock. And I will add it to the calendar as well. So you'll see it there. And then we'll put it on Facebook too. Is there a booklet for this? For this pillow? Yeah, there is no booklet. You had to buy the design from Kimberbell. And then they sent you the instructions. However, I created my own little booklet with my wire binder. But I'm still new at wire binding, so look, I picked the wrong size, so I can't even, I can't even, like, open my nap fully. I'm still learning. I didn't realize that there was a learning curve. But, uh, um, yes, this is, this is the, um, this is what the book looks like when you put it all together. So, I guess there's a booklet, but not really. It didn't come with, like, a book like this. You had to print it out and just make it yourself. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and put your brunette in next. If you're doing the brown leaves, let me go ahead and put that. Oh, this one has little birds in it. Who doesn't love birds in love? Is this brunette? Yep. Monday is good. And if you're not going to stitch this with us, then that's okay. Then just come and do sit and sew. And then I was thinking, how about we do, because I want to do Pretty and Posh. Oh, my goodness. So, Dana had two yards of Pretty Petals. So, I think I'm going to be able to put a couple more kits together with the pink Pretty Petals, which I can't get until March. And I might be able to put together some more Tweet Heart kits. So, if you want the Tweet Heart kit and you want the hot pink, then um, send me a note. I can't find the nice and bad pay for not sewing. Monday is good. Quit. Yes. So this is a live feed. It'll immediately get posted to YouTube.
Okay, this is the email that I'm sending out. Well, this is gonna go on Facebook, and if you're on our email list, then I think it'll get sent to you. But, um, and I'll see if she can also put it, hang on. I'm gonna say, Okay, so your homework is going to be to do, because um, we stitched out tree one, this is tree two, and then you're going to have to, um, that's, your homework is going to be stitch out tree three and four, and then what we're going to do in our sew along on Monday is we will do the pennants, so we'll do those little felt pennants. We'll do the inner border, so we're going to stitch out the embroidery on the, the quilting on the inner border, the outer border. We'll press everything out, we'll trim everything, we'll sew together our top, and we'll add our back, and we will have a complete pillow. That is the goal. And if whatever we don't finish in our sew along on Monday will be filmed, and that'll be it for this project, because guess what? We need to get ready for oh so delightful. But um, I just sent that to Christine, so that should be added to the calendar. There will be no Zoom information, because like I said, it's going to be a live feed, just like what we're doing right now. I've got my calendar marked. Perfect! All right, what's the next step? Or is busy? Is busy talking? Tree two. I've got homework to do, huh? I will film tree three and four, although they're going to be pretty easy, just like what we've done today. You get the you get the gist of it. You know the drill. This is going to use. Um, I think this is going to use the pink card. Peel the plastic film from all the glitter pieces, and our glitter is you need the pink and you need the red. So two of the hearts are going to be pink. Oh, I never I never uh, press that down. So you do want to press that down. So let me go get my pink and my red glitter. Here's my red. Let me see what I have for pink in my scraps. I mean, I even saved like all of my
Okay, go ahead and just hit start again. It's gonna do the placement stitch. Get your piece of brown fabric. And I just gave mine a little shot of spray so it's ready to lay down. projector in well good thing they like figure that out you know sometimes uh sometimes stuff happens so glad you were able to figure that out now because i love the projector i mean i don't use it all the time but i definitely use it it's just a nice feature I find that um, sometimes uh, when I do placement with the camera in um, my main edit page, I will, I think my projector is more accurate. So I will check it before I stitch it. I'll check my uh, embroidery placement with my projector in the page from which we stitch out. Grab your snips, we're gonna trim. go ahead and trim this and then it's going to do the outline stitch I'm looking in my emails right now because I'm waiting for oh my goodness are these my kits hang on I gotta see if they sent them eight Okay, that's not it either. They're sending me my vintage floral though so I can kit out the next square, uh, the next pillow. What was it called again? You folks remember better than I do. You are not gonna believe this. They shipped me Shout Hooray. Oh, so... Is that really, I think I got Shout Hooray and I think I got my Oh So Delightfuls. Oh my goodness. Okay, sorry. I had to know. I had to know if we're going to get our kids. They're coming. And everyone's are gonna get shipped all at once. Is that exciting? I'm so excited and so exhausted just thinking about it. I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait! Oh my god, how am I gonna fit this in? What are we gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna give us two weeks though for everyone to get all their stuff. I'm gonna make Patrick come in all weekend and we are gonna ship out all your stuff. It's gonna be so exciting. I gotta see if uh, they sent me um, the tote bags and I'm not, I'm seeing the fabric kits, which I'm surprised because those I usually get later. That has shipped. Let's see if Kimberbell sent me their stuff because they were supposed to ship out today. Okay, go ahead and start. I'm gonna look at my shipping information. <gasps> what? Look at that. Okay, folks, so I'm gonna be in really big trouble because I spent a lot of money and Patrick didn't know about it.
So I am not she seeing shipping from... goodness my package from EE e. Shank is 280 pounds <laughs> that's a lot of fabric Lori you better get cutting so oh so delightful fabric kits are shipped but I am not seeing my stuff having shipped from Kimberbell so we'll just keep our eyes peeled for that. It looks like my fabric kits though are on their way. Exciting stuff. Oh my goodness, 200, usually my packages are like 30 pounds, like 28 pounds. It's 280 pounds. too but I am going to ship all your stuff all together meaning now we just wait and and what's really good is um being on the on the west coast um you know I, uh, you Kimberbell's in Utah and uh E.E. E. Shanks in is it Oregon or Washington State I always forget so I get stuff pretty quickly from them all right next step we just did I'm like all excited too Oh, we're gonna do the the beaks. So go ahead and pick out your color for that. I like an orangey, kind of like an like an orangey yellow is really nice. I'm gonna go with I'm going with uh, pumpkin seed. Pumpkin seed looks cute to me. Isn't that cute? Pumpkin seed. It's brand new, so I haven't put I haven't written on the top of it. I'm a little stressed out thinking that 280 pounds is coming because that's a lot of bolts too. So vintage floral is coming as well. Plus Patrick doesn't know about all the fabric I ordered. I was just like just throwing it in the cart and I just hit order. And I didn't tell him don't say anything. If you're my friend, you are not going to tell Patrick. <laughs> and if you want to get fabric here, don't tell Patrick. Okay, we need black next to do his little itty bitty skinny legs. And I'm feeling kind of lazy. I'm going to just put, I'm going to leave that, that uh, white bobbin in and see. I'll do one leg, and if there's pin dots everywhere and I can't take it, then I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to, uh, I'll change out my thread. But I'm going to, did you send a spreadsheet for this pillow? There is a spreadsheet, and I did not send it, but it is on the Sew Along group. So go to the A1 Sew Along group, and there is a tab that says files, and all the spreadsheets are there. They're all there and posted. Okay, I'm playing some Russian roulette. Let's see how it looks. I have my finger on the start stop button. I'm gonna stop it. We're gonna look at that leg. That looks totally great. You do not have to put in a black bobbin. It looks fine. 280 pounds. Oh my God, Dana. Can I come help unwrap your deliveries? Come on down. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 
snitches get stitches. That's right. Okay, those look great. Next step, stitch the bird placement line. This is going to be this pretty color and you want the little uh, leather. Do I have a, you know what? I didn't bring a great color here with me for this. I'm just gonna use this like mint. So I'm gonna do, yes. Should I do that? Should I go dark or I'm gonna go dark? <laughs> Getting stressed out. <laughs> Literally, I think I've just been like, well, okay, it stresses me out when I don't have it. So when I need something and it's not here, I get stressed out. So I go, my stress level is worth something. So then I just get it. I'm going to get big trouble. Okay, here we go. Placement line. Patrick never watches the sew alongs. He's too busy. I'm not gonna, well, should I lay it down like this? I have other pieces of this. I'm gonna grab it for my scrappy scrap bin. Usually Patrick really doesn't care and he's like, as long as you're selling it, it's fine. Um, but every once in a while, I get the lecture. And I feel like, I'm like a little kid, like getting the lecture. And I hate the lecture. I don't like it. So I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna get the lecture. <laughs> I'm gonna stop this. It wants to stitch, it wants to sew both of them at the same time, but I'm using this piece, this leftover piece, and you can tell I was doing other birds. So I'm gonna stop it and then I'm gonna trim. And then I'll lay it down for the other one. Whoop, did you see that? Okay, trim as desired. That to me means I'm gonna use straight and uh, curved straight. Here we go. Well, part of the fabric that I got was because we're going to do the other pillow. I want to give it to you at all. <laughs> okay, we're partners in crime, you and I. The other one is the one that has the, um, oh my goodness, it's so cute. What was it called? I can't even remember the name of it right now. Full Bloom or something? I'm like shocked that Shout Hooray is, uh, that they shipped me, they shipped me that too. I thought that wasn't coming out until the end of, uh, March. There we go. He's cute. Okay, we're going to lay the other one down. Let's see. He'll look great just like that. Make sure I have enough all the way. Or do I need to go a different direction? Should we do it like here? Okay, I'm going to spray the top right there. Done twenty percent off uh, for our class discount, um, but like everything else, our costs have gone up. Our uh, labor costs have gone up. Everything kind of has gone up. 
So Patrick told me we had to go to 16%. So I did get in trouble the other day. Um, I can't help it. I love giving discounts. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You know, because I always go, I'm a consumer too. Like, I love a discount. I love it when I get one. So, so if you listen today, I was like, 15% off, ladies. And it just didn't feel as good. But it's something, right? How cute are those? Patrick says we can't do this if we don't make money. We have to make money. We can't do it for free. Okay. Um, next step. Those are the little birdies. Trim is desired. Stitch the heart one and heart one and six placement lines. Hot pink. Grab your hot pink thread. Patrick says I does I don't value my time. <laughs> he says I need to. I'm a bad business owner. <laughs> You know what I am? I'm a good friend and bad business owner. <laughs> I try. I know, isn't it fun, Annetta? It's so cute. Look at, I do throw things away, so I'm gonna cut off these like pieces that are hanging off. And we'll keep this though. We'll keep that. We're gonna be laying down glitter. Remember that long strip of glitter that I was like, what am I gonna do with three fourths inch glitter? Well, I figured it out. So I'm gonna lay this one down first. I'll let it stitch. This will be trim as desired. And then I'm just gonna cut it off and then I'll lay it down for the lot, next one. And it does want us to press this. I'm gonna press them later. It's ruining my groove, having to take it off the machine. Whoop, hang on. Let me cut this. I will. I'm gonna lay this one down here. Um, Trish, I do not own the store. The store owns me. Now, that's another thing Patrick always says. The store, I own the store, the store doesn't own me. And he says that, and I go, uh, the store owns me. I just can't, I can't not, I'm not good at, uh, <laughs> you guys know I'm not good at A, saying no, not good at that, not good behind the register. I'm not good. I, I, I become unreliable. <laughs> I used to be more reliable. Sometimes I feel unreliable because we're just so busy. I never, I never want to be, I never want to let anyone down. But if ever it takes me a little while to get back to you, I hope you understand. And you'll just reach out to me again. Say, hey, don't forget me. We'll never forget you on purpose. I'm very relaxed right now. So if I start to heavy breathe, if I breathe heavy, it's because I'm very relaxed while I'm trimming. And then I'm very tense when I think about 280 pounds showing up tomorrow or the next day. I think it'll be here Friday. back to be here.
don't mention it in the live feed tomorrow. Look how cute that is. I made him really pointy. So cute. You know what? Fabric makes everything better, doesn't it? I'm gonna I'm gonna press those later. All at once. All right, stitch the heart. Three placement line color does not make a difference, but red is gonna be next, but I'm just gonna leave the pink in there and then I'll change it out. We are gonna be putting down the cherry fabric, which I barely use any of my other ones. And I kept it. Where did I put it? Let's put this back in here and this in here. Where are you, cherry fabric? Oh, there you are. We're gonna have a sale on Vintage Flora, but after I cut all the kits. <laughs> some, some of our, um, some of our customers aren't allowed to watch the live feed, and I have had customers say that they go into the bathroom and they watch it so their husbands don't know. I think you should be allowed to come to Reno. Everyone should come for the OASD event that we're going to do. Oops. You know what? This one is trimmed close to the stitch. So there is going to be an outline stitch. So I'm going to go in with my uh, snips. Patrick had to, we had to open up a new bank account because we had fraud. Isn't that, it's so scary. It is so scary because they got into our account, which means they know enough information about us. And he, I don't even look at the bank account. I used to, before we, um, before I started working again and we had the shop, I handled all of the, of our personal banking. And then once I started working and I was working a lot, I, which I never do things like this, I missed, we're putting in light pink. So we just finished this step right here. And now we're on to this step. So light pink. Um, I handled everything and then Patrick took over because I became unreliable. Where is my light pink? Hang on, here it is. So, but he was looking through everything and we had something that looks suspicious and uh, it makes me really angry that there are people out there that that's what they spend their time doing. Yeah, exactly. This is kind of like Vegas. What we say here ends here. I think these would have been cute with, um, with... What should we call it? Just the the pink leather. Where is my pink fabric? I don't know, so I'm gonna just grab. Is this pink fabric or is this? Yeah, it's pink fabric. Let me grab another piece. Oh, a little spray. I feel like this kind of stuff can move around and get puckered. If Patrick left already and came back, or he never left. We're gonna finish this one up, and then, like I said, you're gonna have some homework. We're gonna trim this, and then we're gonna do the mylar after this one. So do this, and then we're gonna uh, trim close to the fabric, and then we're gonna do the decorative stitching.
Ooh, he's talking, and whatever he's talking about sounds juicy. Like, I want to hear. Because now they're talking about it being an inside job. Okay, while it's doing this, I'm going to get my piece of mylar. I kept all of that. Where did it all go? There it is. Here's my mylar from before. I'm going to use that same mylar. And then we're also going to need, um, it looks like the red glitter. The red glitter. Oh my goodness. Yes, some of the ladies work for their Kimberbell. They work for their Kimberbell, their machine, their hoops, just everything. Rolo, there is a lot. I'm going to have you come in and pick. I, it really was like, I normally order all the Kimberbell, and it was so much fabric. I, I can't remember because there were two collections that came out. There was like the Vintage Flora, and then they did a whole line of like new basics. So it was a lot because otherwise I would have just gotten all of it. Um, so I really just bought everything that went with this new pillow because the pillow is so cute. The, uh, the OESD event is going to be April. It's April 21st. That sounds bad, doesn't it? What's going on? Is something stuck? That just sounded, maybe it was fine. Maybe it was this, just the sound going through the mylar. Okay, let's keep going. Nope, that doesn't sound right. I'm gonna cut. You know what that sounds to me like? It sounds like it's the end of a bobbin and the bobbin thread is getting caught. I know. Trust our mama ears. And the bobbin did get caught. Do you see that? Sometimes it won't unwind. So something happened here. And that's a bummer because there's like a lot of thread on here. But if I can't get this undone, I'm tossing it in the trash. Okay. I um, I go through a lot of Filtech bobbins. I don't know if I've ever had one like that. Usually happens all the way at the very end. I don't know if I've had one happen where it had that much thread on it. But, but trust yourself. If your mama ears are telling you something doesn't sound right, something probably isn't right. And that was making it so it was pulling. I'm going to go ahead and go back. I'm going back 20 stitches. And there we go. That sounds much better. Did I tell you, was it, did I answer you, the OESD event's going to be um, April 21st, and I can't remember if it's the 21st and 22nd, or if it is the 20th and 21st, but something like that. All right. What's next? Red. We're going to put red in, we're going to do the red placement, and then we're going to be putting down red glitter. Let me call you Tweetheart. Look at, see, now I have this horrible inner stitch line that I need to make sure I can encase. That is what happened when you are not paying attention. And I'm gonna go ahead and, whoop, he moved. This is gonna get trimmed right on the stitch line. Uh, and it's gonna have a satin stitch on the outline. So, I'm just gonna do it right on the edge. I'm gonna trim it with my snips. Trim the glitter as desired. Wait, let me make sure. 
We did that. Stitch that. Trim the glitter as desired and pressed. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one is as desired. So I actually should have left a little bit more of an edge. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that. The next one is going to be a th one that's thread. All thread. So let's go ahead and trim this one as desired. I don't like sharp edges. Except the very point of the heart. That's the only way, place I like it. So I'm going to leave a little bit of an edge. Yeah. See you later. Good night. I'll, I'll see, see you tomorrow, you. okay? Yeah, thank okay. you. You love the I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye -bye. Did I work you too hard? Yes, I worked so Oh, no. Oh, please, please. I didn't work hard enough, probably. <laughs> Okay, this next one, we're going to leave the red in, and it's just going to be a um, embroidered heart. I'll see you. I'll see you. Did you get your nails done? Was it yesterday? Yes. Or I got Valentine's. Oh, they look poor. Oh, they have the no hearts. Fun. Yes. You this guys are so film. lucky when Michelle does your see. class, and she has beautiful film. nails. Oh, those are pretty, and then you see mine, and I look else. like I, I look like, mine, yeah. I work in this, I, I look like I've been picking. I'll see you. Bye, ladies. Bye. After it does the stitch chart, then you're going to do the outline in red, and then we're going to do the line detail down the satin stitch in our light pink. And it has the, oh, look, it's just so cute. So there's the. So we're going to do the satin outline. So just go ahead and hit, ooh. Oh yeah, satin outline on that. There's just hearts. I don't know which goes to, what goes to which heart. And then there'll be another heart that's just going to be a satin outline. Then we'll do the pink running stitch down the center of it. And then these radiated out, like little, I don't know, what do you call them? Like cilia. We'll call it cilia. And then we have a couple more things to do here. Oh, my tape clap? Is it pushing? Yeah, it's pushing, but it's okay because it has the fabric pushing it back the other way. Rolo, I won't tell Joe if you won't tell Patrick. Pinky swear. So cute. Okay, that was step number 37. Now we're going to do step number 38. We're still using red. And then I want you to get your light pink. And while you're getting your light pink, I am going to clean up a little bit, get ready for my exit. I didn't know what thread colors I was going to use, so I have a whole bunch. I'm going to try and keep these separated now that I know which ones I want. I'm going to just put them in my... Um, my pop-up bin and throw out the garbage and then throw them in my pop-up bin. What is next? My screen says white, but my book says pink. So just whichever you want. That can be confusing. Like if you're looking at your screen, cause it will give you color recommendations. Like, especially if you've never done embroidery before and, um, and you know, you know now, if you've done it uh, enough Kimberbell, you know that aqua or that like, that teal color is gonna be placement line and then the orange is gonna be the tack down. But if you don't know that, then you're using aqua and teal. So I would go with the colors in the book first. Go with those colors.
Thank you, Miss Lynn. Well, you know, I think it's like when it's your your business, you um, you do. You put your heart and soul into it, right? And I do want like I really care. So I want everyone to be happy and love what you're doing, love the things you get, love the machines you work on. This is the heart detail. Well, then I want you to grab your hot pink. We're gonna stitch the heart five fill. Hot pink. Where is my hot pink? Here it is. Put in my hot pink. I gotta separate my threads because I'm starting to get a little confused. Oh wait, yes, this is the hot pink I've been using. Pink. Okay, this is step number 41, and then we're going to stitch the wing fill. So you're going to give little wings to these guys, so pick a color. Pick a, oh no, that's too green. I want something a little more blue. I'm going to go with this. This is Magic Mint. Let's go Magic Mint. And you're going to do the eyes for the bank. Uh, they basically were like, we can't help you in real time right now. So, I think we're going to do the Um, I've been putting it off for so long. Did you do the top? Is... I did, it's already put it Okay, um, and you added it extra? Yeah. There's not much, yeah, there's not really much order-wise today, and there's not really much. Order Don't worry, we'll about. have a lot to do. I'm leaving. Okay. I'm gonna go to the gym. Uh, it, I like Violet seems stressed and Kai is already at. So if you can come home after this, okay. It'd be awesome. All right. All right. Bye. See ya. Bye, ladies. Patrick says goodbye. And gents. And gents. Bye, ladies and gents. Now we can talk about whatever we want. Because when the cat's away... What? <laughs> I'm going to move your car where your keys. I Did I tell you so Patrick moves my car for me? Because I just park in like the regular parking spot that um, a lot of nights I'll stay later. So he moves it right in front of the door. And then I make him stay on the phone with me because... I'm always scared somebody's gonna get me. Because I watch too much HLN. Oh my goodness. Guess what I did the other day. I didn't lock the door. Can you believe that? And the door, the door was open all night. I shouldn't talk about that, should I? That was the second time in since 2015. showed up and <laughs> walked right in. Oh my god. 
the alarm started. I set the alarm. The alarm started going off. That's never a good feeling, though. So I'm glad I didn't realize it. Well, I wish I had, because then I would have come back and locked the door. But um, ignorance was bliss. I would have been so stressed out. Okay, eyes. And then we're going to stitch the leaves. The leaves are going to go next. And I used, again, I used sage and clover. So we're gonna do all our little leaves. And they have a bunch of tape, but I'm not using tape. And I'm not taking out the basting stitch either. I've decided I really like the basting stitch. I think it looks cute. I like the, the fabric around it. I think it just outlines it. Looks adorable. I'll see you um, soon. Yeah, okay. Bye. Bye, thank you. I'm gonna lock the door. Please do. All right, first I'm going to put in, we're going to do prickly pear first, because, so I'm going to put in the sage. What? I don't know if I can stay late. I'm starting to get sleepy. Are you, are you guys getting sleepy too? It's like my sleepy time. Three to, three to like six is my sleepy time, and then I get a, a second, I get my second wind. Okay, grab your little leaves. You should have three of the prickly pear ones. And then you should have um, three of the pistachio ones. I'm just going to lay them right down again. I'm going to embrace um, the excess fabric. And let me give them a, a shot of spray. What I'm going to in embrace is just the ease of laying it down and not having to worry about whether or not I have enough fabric top and bottom, because I know I will. Okay, stitch them down. Uh, I know, I don't even give you a break. I don't even give you a bathroom break. Wanda, where are you again? Because I know I have some East Coasters. And if you're East Coast, it is 8.30. And that's sleepy time. Okay, let's trim these up. Just like a little outline up around those, or you could stitch right to those basting stitches if you wanted. You could even stitch them and try and snip them if you're gonna be removing them. That's what I do sometimes with the, uh, when we do chenille. I try, to, I try to trim them ultra close in hopes that maybe I'll snip some of them because those you have to take out. But these, I am, I'm gonna leave them. I think they look cute. I like the outline.
All right, I'm gonna change out my thread. We're gonna do the same process. There's actually four of the um, pistachio leaves that are gonna go down here. You can leave that. I'm gonna just leave in the green that I have just because it's gonna stitch on top of them. But is this like so sweet? Look at those. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. You might get a cavity if you look at it long enough. Grab your, your felt. Oh, PJs sound good. PJs and slippers. I'm gonna give these all a little shot of spray. I'm getting jelly. That sounds so comfy. You know what sounds really good? PJ's Blanky Movie Popcorn and a fire. with a puppy on the left and the right and hubby rubbing my feet. No, Patrick doesn't rub my feet, but. <laughs> that sounds good. I've never been to Nashville. I want to go to Nashville. I don't know if I can do it. I really, you know what? I'm going to cut these in half and I'm going to use them that way. I just can't help myself. I'm going to cut them. insurance capital of the world. <laughs> At least it used to be. But we love the West Coast too. Oh, look at that one. That one's so tiny. All right. We are gonna trim these and then we're gonna just do that little outline stitch. And if you want to remove that basting stitch, you can go back and remove that basting stitch too.
Are those cute or what? Super, super cute. Okay, just do that outline stitch. That's uh, what's gonna help you trim. And we are done for tonight. I think I'm gonna have to go in here and rip out this stitch right here. That is uh, that is just gonna bother me and I think it's gonna show when I sew it all together. I did bring a sleeve ripper. And that'll be the perfect thing to do in bed tonight before I go to sleep while I'm cuddling up my puppies. And uh, you know what I like to do is if you get a stitch, let me show you really quickly. If you take out a stitch from the front, so I'm gonna just take out that, okay? And you get a stitch from the back. Let me see if I can get it to pull up without taking it off. Then you can just pull on the top. Okay. Flip it to the back. And right here. Is that the one? Let's let's make sure I'm I'm taking out the stitch from the right one. Yeah, right here. Okay. Then you should just be able to grab here on the top. And it pulls the bobbin thread up. This is two at a time though. I don't know if it'll, yeah. So let me see if I can get that one. So you don't have to like get your seam ripper under every stitch, but like I said, you usually, usually it's a, I'm usually pulling just on one. The other thing is, do you see? Oh, I got it now. But this might get in the way, just having this here. But I am going to go ahead and rip that out. I just don't want to be dealing with those threads. And I'm sorry if you were following me and this happened to you too. But anyways, um, thanks for a great sew along. I will see you. We will uh, join back here on Monday. I'm going to just do it from home. And... Uh, We'll finish up. So your homework. You did two of the four trees. So I want you to do tree three and four. And then um, we'll do pendants. We'll do inner borders, outer borders, press, trim, sew together, and add the back. And um, and then we're going to have, and that'll be on the 13th, which means you have a fantastic present for the one you love on the 14th for Valentine's Day. So any questions? I paid for which ticket? Is there something I should know about? Oh, P Paducah. Oh yeah, that I, I like to go to that sometime too. All right, have a great night. Loved having you. I'll see you later. If you have any questions, send me an email and we will see you on 